Pursuant to Internal Revenue Service guidance, be advised that any federal tax advice contained in this program is not intended to be used and it cannot be used by any person or entity for the purpose of avoiding any tax penalties that may be imposed by the Internal Revenue Service or any other U.S. federal taxing authority or agency or promoting, marketing, or recommending to another party any transaction or matter addressed in this show. The opinions expressed by the host and the guests are their own and may not be used as authoritative advice. Any use of this material without the written consent of the host is strictly prohibited. You're listening to the IRS Radio Hour with your host, Attorney Stephen Leahy, on AM560, The Answer. Tune in every week at 5 for an informative discussion about IRS obligations, credit card debt, mortgage default, collection activity, and how to resolve these legal issues using tax resolution, debt settlement, mortgage loan modification, foreclosure defense, and bankruptcy. Your host is Stephen Leahy a Chicago attorney and the principal at Oakham Tax Resolution and the law office of Stephen A. Leahy, PC. Stephen is the author of Deal With Your IRS Problems Today. IRS and debt issues are serious, but there is help. There are resolutions. So get ready and take notes during the IRS Radio Hour. And now, here's your host, Attorney Stephen Leahy. Hello, Chicago. And I am your host, Attorney Stephen Leahy, and this is the IRS Radio Hour on AM560, The Answer. We help people dealing with IRS problems, audits, levies, liens, garnishments, collections, and payroll tax issues. We also deal with mortgage foreclosures, loan modifications, bankruptcy, and other debt-related issues. So if you have any of these problems, or if you know someone who does, you should give me a call at 312 664 Six six four nine, and I have. I am an author of a book, and the book's title is "Deal with Your IRS Problems Today." And if you want a free copy of the book, just mention it when you give us a call, and I'll send you out a free copy. I want to introduce my co-host Jim Leahy. Hello, everybody. Uh, if it's Sunday at five, it is the IRS Radio Hour. Uh, we uh, this is a show about uh, financial problems and, and how Steve can help you solve them, but it's also a local show. Uh, about uh, you know local issues, sports, politics, news, family things. Uh, as you know, as we say that it's, it's important that when you when you're looking for help with your finances, that you look for somebody who's local who you can you can reach out and talk to, or stop by the office. Um, I was uh, we, we were talking about uh, this week coming up, and and it's a Labor Day weekend, and we were uh, you know as we usually do, we go into the background of some of these things and. You know, Labor Day was. Did you? you look I did look up Labor Day, and it started in 1865. 1866 as a yeah. as a local um, as a local celebration, and and then it was uh, it, it became national later. And they, there's some debate about who who was the the uh, principal of the, the of principal of it. You know, uh, Labor Day is a, a big day. Not kind of, not kind of like Fourth uh, of July or anything for me. <laughs> no, uh, but although although I don't know if people know this, but you know, Jim and I were our third generation uh, members iron of workers, iron workers, and mm-hmm. you know, my grandfather, my dad, local one thirty six riggers, local one thirty six uh, is iron worker local. The last machinery moving local in the country, in and the that's country. what we do. We move heavy machinery. Uh, that's what we did before we. Moved on to our new jobs, but uh, we still have uh, connections. Our, our connections, yeah. and uh, Steve, Steve still has his union card. So that's uh, right. Uh, when if something ever goes wrong, you can always go back and move machinery. Again. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's I trouble. Was, that that is good though. But <laughs> but wait, so we so I support the labor movement, obviously. Of and, course. And I was always surprised at how many of the of my uh, uh, brother brother Brothers. union la- uh, union members actually thought a lot like me. Because right. I, I was just like them. I was them. <laughs> That's right. We got our jobs uh, from from uh, from a local uh, uh, precinct captain too. Back in the day, with my a, grandfather, my grandfather was a precinct That's captain. Right. That's well, right. How do you? How, so so my dad you got to work. So we're third generation. That's, That's right. right. Uh, well, you know, this week there's a lot of. Uh, I want to bring up some things as we always talk about family and stuff. This week we're going to be barbecuing with the family uh, if it doesn't rain. Uh, or maybe even if it does rain. Even if it does rain, it's Sunday, so it was supposed to. It, it has. It's been a beautiful day today. That's all I'm saying. That's right. So, um, <laughs> uh, last week I was at. I want to do a shout out to the people. I was on Thursday. We were at uh, the Lake Forest West train station. I was with the American Legion, and we dedicated a Blue Star Memorial uh, to the men and women of the armed forces, uh, to our veterans, and to the people who are in now. 
Captain James Lovell was there, and I got to meet him. He, he Lovell's restaurant is right across the street. Right across the street. I go there often, and I didn't. I didn't even see it, Jim. I don't see well, where is it at the at the uh, train station. It's, it's right as you pull in, so that every car that comes and leaves will see the blue the uh-huh. Blue Star Memorial there. Uh-huh. We were there yesterday. It's it's brand new. Um, but as I said, we just dedicated it yesterday, so we were there and. Uh, he doesn't look anything like Tom Hanks. <laughs> he doesn't. No, that's what I told him. He said my wallet doesn't either. So mm-hmm. he's, probably, you know, he's probably, probably right about that, that too. Right. So, uh, although love, I you know get a plug for Lovells. It's a great place. We, I've been there many, many times. It's, it's very nice. And there's there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of uh, memorabilia there. There is. Yeah. Uh, we we also um, the kids started school this week. Uh, they are not a sponsor of our show, though, Jim. We, maybe they should be. <laughs> maybe we should make it. That's right. That's right. Well, the kids all started school this week. Uh, the high school kids and the. Uh, my one in, the one in Marquette started this week, Jennifer. Um, your kids all started. Uh, oh, that one. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> she's a big problem. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't, she, she's well, let's go. Uh, you know, um, uh, as a, you know, the, so let's. So let's, what's let's, in the news this week, Jim? Well, uh, you know, last week we talked about ISIL, ISIS, Al Qaeda, whatever they want to call them this week, and we also pointed out the fact that our Secretary of Defense. Came up with a, a a stunning, some stunning remarks, and I want to go back over it again. ISIL is as sophisticated and well funded as any uh, group that we have seen. Uh, they're, they're beyond just a terrorist group. They marry ideology, a sophistication of, of strategic and uh, tactical military prowess. They are tremendously well funded. Oh, this is beyond anything that, that we've seen. So we must pre- prepare for, for everything when we look at uh, uh, what they did to Mr. Foley, uh, what they threatened to do uh, to all Americans uh, and Europeans. Well, there. No, that's well, at, least the, at least the White House is on top of this, though, well, Jim. You would think the White House is, in, you know, and, and, but and we it, did. We, they did say, you know, I know that the president was on vacation, but you know, he's always at work. Yeah. Well, he came out yesterday, and he, and he said, uh, "But I don't want to put the cart before the horse. We don't have a strategy." Huh? I, <laughs> what? A strategy. What did he say? I, I, I was when I heard that the first time. I was shocked. I mean, I really was. Whether you have a strategy or not, but to come out and say, we have no strategy. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I heard George Will say, well, or was it Crown Eric? He said, if you don't have it, don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. I would come out and say, we have multiple strategies at play. Hey, 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 I can't tell you what it is. That's how good this <laughs> is. Boy, we're going to get yeah, them know. by surprise <laughs> because I can't tell you what our strategy is. But to come out and say, I have no I strategy. hate to laugh about this because it's, it's this is one of the scariest it, things you know, in the world. We were, and we're coming up on the anniversary of, you know, the, you know, funny, yesterday I was sitting at the Blue Star Memorial and um, it was a beautiful day and I was thinking, man, it's a beautiful day in September and it just reminded me so much of that 9/11. September 11th oh. morning. It was just this beautiful September day. And I'm well, you know, I, I, you know, I go to Drudge occasionally. Yes, and I saw it's it's like going to the Blaze, Jim. He's he's like it's apoc- apocalyptic. I know. Well, that's just it's, a, it's under, what's going on in this world with with Russia and and ISIL and. Uh, they talk about the bubonic plague and the Ebola mm. and all. Uh, we, we have the, the immigrant, the illegal yeah. immigrants rushing are our storming, <laughs> storming the beaches of San Diego. It's, it's, then they have some. They, they have kids or kids. They said with the. There are people trying to get into grade school with hair graying. Great hair. Yeah, I well, have a red pencil. <laughs> I, they, hey, I need an education too. Why? I, do, why can't I, I have an I, education? I just, uh, what's you know. It just seems like we've lost the grip of what's going on. Into the, in well, this you know, country. I often wonder: is it a is he a diabolically clever, our president, or or in over his head? I'm not sure which one it is. I believe he's diabolically in over his head. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think of that one. That was a good one. You know, we also have some, uh, of course, our, our regular uh, sections of the show. We have the the blog entry, which is bankruptcy chapter seven. Uh, we have our ongoing saga. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also want to bring up the fact that the IRS is, um, uh, we found out this week, that the IRS is not letting out any of its, uh, there's information that it has uh, on uh, migration between the states, uh, usually that they do every couple of years. It seems that this is an election year, so they don't want to uh, release information of people moving from blue states 
to red, red states. states. Well, this goes back to the bank to the uh, Burger King thing too. You know, the Burger King is Burger King's, Burger King's, leave. Leave. Burger King's leave, leaving because of this inversion because they save a lot more money in taxes and people do the same thing, right? They move they vote from with one, their feet. That's right. They move from one state to another based on what the unemployment rate is and what the tax rate is. And it seems to me that if there is there is no state income tax, it seems that the Unemployment rates are lower. I think that's just a coincidence, Jim. Well, that's one what, does not that's, cause the other. That's what our that's what our our, our friendly governor Pat Quinn would tell I you. I understand. It has it, nothing it, to do with the fact that we have the highest uh, but uh, it's, income. But rates. it's another politicalization of the IRS. Yeah. So we'll where the IRS that. has information that they don't want to give us for political reasons. And we also have a listener. And question. Also, I just want to mention this oh, because God. the IRS will say that they're doing this because their budget has been cut. That's right, and we're going to cut it tomorrow. So I there's hope. a million reasons why they can't do what they got to do. Actually, three. 300 million reasons because they cut it 300 million. So if you want to, if you have an IRS problem, you have a question about the IRS, call me at 312-664-6649. Visit the website, chicagotaxteam.com, or send me a question at questions at irsradiohour.com. And if you go to the office, you get a free cookie, a free baked, fr- <laughs> fresh baked cookie. Don't go anywhere. You'll be, we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Stephen Leahy, a local Chicago attorney. I believe that God has given each of us unique abilities, and we are to use those abilities to help others. I have helped hundreds of Chicagoans recover from financial disaster. And if the IRS is threatening you with liens, levies, or garnishments, or you have years of unfiled tax returns, I want to help you. Compliance is the first step to resolving your IRS problem, and compliance begins with your 2013 taxes. Are you ready? If you call now, make an appointment, and visit my office for a free confidential consultation, we will complete your personal 2013 tax return at no charge, even if you don't hire me to resolve your IRS problem. Remember, I'm a local Chicago attorney. Investigate me. Simply Google Stephen, with a V, Leahy, L-E-A-H-Y, reviews, to find out what the Better Business Bureau and others have said. Or call me at 312-664-6649. Again, that's 312-664-6649. Visit us on the web at chicagotaxteam.com. Call me today. Welcome back to the IRS Radio Hour with attorney Stephen Leahy. Stephen has helped hundreds of Chicagoans recover from financial disaster, and he wants to help you and your family. There are resolutions, and you will hear about all those resolutions during today's informative discussion on the IRS Radio Hour on AM560, The Answer. Now, here's your host, Attorney Stephen Leahy. Welcome back. I am your host, Attorney Stephen Leahy, and this is the IRS Radio Hour on AM560, The Answer. And there's lots of information. We didn't get anything we wanted to get in in that first section. Uh, Just too much. You know, there's just too much. To... That's why I'm hoping Levels will, will sponsor the show and bring us into another hour. <laughs> yeah, two hours. That's a... that's the third time we brought up their name. Now you we know have what? Maybe, maybe we got to do Tom Hanks. He seems to have more money. So maybe Tom <laughs> Hanks can... I don't think we agree politically with oh, that's Tom probably, That's probably that's okay. true. That's Let probably true. Uh, so this is the... Yeah, uh, this, is, this is... Now we're getting into the section of uh, of the show, which is the uh, the... Uh, your blog. My blog. And what is this? What's the entry this week again? Today chapter it's seven? IRS Bankruptcy Chapter 7. Oh. In the last several months, I mean several weeks of the show, we've been talking about the different, the six things you can do if you owe the IRS money. And the first thing you can do is pay them, right? Write them a check and be done with them. And the second thing you can do is set up an installment agreement. We talked about that several what weeks ago. What if you wrote them a check and it bounced? Well, then you didn't pay them, did you? Mm-hmm. So. Uh, the, Just wondering if you and if you are interested in any of these others, they, they're all on the blog. If you go to my blog, if you go to Chicago Tax Team dot com, there is a uh, there is a link there. Open Tax Blog, and each one of these options, I have written an article about, so you can read the, the article. But you can also go to the IRS Radio Hour link and view or listen to each section about these these different options. So. Um, so again, if you have any questions, go to the go to the website. You'll get an answer there. You know. Uh, so the second thing is the installment agreement. The third thing is the offer in compromise. The fourth thing we talked about last week was uh, currently not collectible status, uh, and then the fifth thing is bankruptcy. Now, bankruptcy is a complicated area of the law when it comes to taxes, even when it's not in taxes. But taxes makes it much more uh, complicated. Is that what Chapter Seven means? Actually, um, that's a very good question. The well, thank you very much. The bankruptcy code is found under Title 11 of the United States Code. And if you think of the bankruptcy code as a book, 
And like every other book, it's divided into chapters. And this is why you hear so much about a chapter 7 or a chapter 11 or a chapter 13 or a chapter 9. So chapter 7 is liquidation. And this is the kind that most people think about when they think about bankruptcy or when they hear about it, that they're hearing about chapter 7. Uh, chapter 9 are these municipal bankruptcies. So Detroit is in a chapter 9 bankruptcy. Uh, chapter 11. Uh, weren't they the first ones? No, no, no. Oh. Chapter 9 has been around for a long time. That's so what I was saying. A lot of, st- lot of uh, cities in California, three or four are right now in a chapter a chapter 9 bankruptcy. So that you'll hear, you see, so now that I mentioned it, Jim, you'll hear about, a lot about oh, it yeah, in the like, news. That's it's, right. It's it, like, it, like hearing a new word. That's right. All of a sudden it's everywhere. So, uh, and chapter 11 is the is generally for businesses and, you know, cha- uh, United, a lot of uh, companies that you've heard about have been in bankruptcy when you hear about companies in bankruptcy. United generally Airlines. It's, then those it's generally Chapter 11. Uh, chapter 13 is is a is for um, wage earners, so it's a repayment reorganization for families, tr- usually trying to save their home. Uh, chapter Chapter 15 is for cross border, so there's all these different chapters that have that that um, are available, and each chapter has a different remedy for a different situation. So today we're going to talk about Chapter 7, and the title of Chapter 7 again is liquidation. So what happens under Chapter 7 liquidation is all your assets above a certain level of exemptions allowed by law, and these are state laws. So most, in a vast majority of cases, nobody loses anything in a Chapter 7 because there's enough exemptions in Illinois law to protect most of all of your assets. Speaking of assets, didn't uh, Vanessa Williams get the... Uh... <laughs> she has an IRS problem, Jim, yes. Okay. They, they have filed the tax lien against her. That is true. I would like the way you worked that in. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. kind of like how you worked in Lonnie Anderson. I did week. like that, yes. That's true. <laughs> so we like to talk about that. Uh, so... <laughs> We so, like to talk about it. So uh, under chapter Excuse 7, me, go ahead. so let's talk about taxes in chapter 7 because all taxes are not dischargeable. Only some taxes are dischargeable. So, so for instance, a, if you have a trust fund recovery penalty, those are never dischargeable in bankruptcy. And recent taxes, so my le- taxes from last year or the year before, uh, those aren't dischargeable. And then that question was, are property taxes and those aren't. those aren't dischargeable. We know that. So, uh, so the but taxes that are dischargeable, you have to meet three important dates in order to have taxes discharged in bankruptcy. So the first one is that that um, tax return must be due more than three years f- from the date that you file your bankruptcy. So uh, and remember now, your taxes are due in April fifteenth f- of the. The next year for the year before. So mm-hmm. 2010 taxes would come due April 15th, 2011, okay. um, unless you ask for a extension. And then they don't come to until April. I mean, August. October, oh, okay. October. So you don't know. So, again, this is it, it gets complicated because you you have to look into these and to these dates in order to get it right. What do you mean by three years? I don't... I don't. Uh... So it's got to be due. So if I file today, for instance, if I were to file a bankruptcy co- uh, case today and they did, and nobody filed an extension, well, three years from today would be 2011. That would have been 2010 taxes. Then those 2010 taxes would be dischargeable today unless I filed an extension and then those wouldn't be due until October 15th. And if I file today, they wouldn't be dischargeable. And this is what happens to a lot of people is that they file a bankruptcy without doing the investigation. Oh, okay. And then no. they were only a month away. And if they would have waited a month, maybe there's those, 30, those would have been included in the bankruptcy. That's right. But, but uh-huh, now but, I understand. But because if saying. you don't wait, then they're not included and then they're not dischargeable. So the second date is they must be filed more than two years ago. So sometimes they come due, people don't file them, and they don't file them until the next year. So they have to be filed two years ago. And then they have the tax must be assessed more than 240 days ago. So those are the three important dates, and they shift because, pe- because again, they're, they're, uh, uh, they, the due date's different sometimes. Um, people file things in between. So, for instance, if I ask for an offer and compromise, that might put a delay in those days and may, may lengthen those dates out. And it gets very complicated. And again, you ha- that's why you, if you're going to think about bankruptcy and you have IRS debts, go see a lawyer who understands IRS debts, not just any bankruptcy attorney, because they don't know IRS law. And it's very and again, it gets very complicated unless you work with this stuff all the time. And I do. I work with it all the time. <laughs>
<laughs> so, so the, also the tax. There's two things about your conduct. You can try to evade your taxes, and you can't you can't willfully try to evade them. And it can't be a fraudulent return. So you can't just. So if all five of those criteria, then they are dischargeable in bankruptcy, and you can discharge a, a, these in. Well, in, well, they go after your. I mean, if you make a mistake on line seven A. Is that a fraudulent tax return? No, no, then? that's an that's an error, and that's not a problem. You know, the, oh, okay. the, that's not going to make it. I mean, because because you them. would think that the IRS would go, oh no, you made a mistake on line eight eight B, and that is fraudulent. No, we're not going to. You you've got to pay us. Yes, no, I, 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 this is kind of like Illinois does because Illinois no. Illinois will send you a if there is a problem with your taxes, they'll send you a notice of of deficiency. There's a problem, and if you don't. If you don't um, respond because you say, "Okay, I'll pay the extra tax," and you just pay them, well, or 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 you just agree with it and you don't do anything, that there, it's not counted as a tax return filed. And again, this is where it gets complicated. Did is it a what you filed? Is that a tax return? In that date, was that date, what date did you file it? These are all things that could be mm-hmm. that could come up as an issue that you have to fight and you have to understand. Uh, you know, is it a return? Uh, there's things that sometimes maybe I'll file something and the IRS says, well, yeah, you did file something, but that's not a tax return. And so then it's not dischargeable. So they're always trying to find a reason why it's that's not what dischargeable. I was asking. Yeah, they they're were... always trying to find a reason. And then uh, even though you discharge taxes in bankruptcy, then they may still have a lien. We talked about that last week mm-hmm. about liens. That oh, I may, remember. That may remain even after you file bankruptcy. So, the, again, this gets really complicated and um, – and it's something again. You need an attorney who really understands this stuff. If you're thinking about filing bankruptcy, well, just to protect yourself and, anyway. Now we go back to hiring an IRS firm that doesn't do bankruptcies. And there's a lot. Most IRS, I think, companies don't offer that as a solution. And some often bankruptcy is the best solution. Sometimes in conjunction with another solution. But if if I go see a company who doesn't provide that mm-hmm. bankruptcy. Well, well if then, they don't provide it, then they don't even, they don't even look at it. They don't even, they don't even give it, me then. that as an option. Or they don't even bring it up, which is, in, which is the important thing. That, that's why you should be, you that's should go right. to somebody who's, who's looking out for you. And anyway, right. and, like has, said, and has all the tools in the toolbox. And has all the tools in the toolbox. It's important. So how, would, so how would somebody who was, who was looking for help. Are you considering bankruptcy? Does the IRS, no, do you not. owe the IRS money? Then you should call me at 312-664-6649. Again, that's 312-664. Do they get a free book? 6649. You can get a free book if you go to chicagotaxteam.com or send us a question at questions at irsradiohour.com. Or they can listen here on Sunday nights at 5 o'clock. But and they can't send get a you, free book. But then. they can send you a, a question. That's right. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Stephen Leahy. And for me, success comes when I help other people. That's why I became an attorney. I know the economy has taken a financial toll on many families and businesses, but I believe that they can recover from their financial problems if they just get the right help. I'm here in Chicago, and I know that if people improve their financial situation, they improve their lives, and I want to help. If the IRS is attacking you with liens, levies, or garnishments, if your mortgage company has threatened foreclosure, or collector's calls are driving you mad, you need help. We listen to your financial situation, find out what's really going on, and develop a workable solution. Remember, I'm right here in Chicago, and your first visit is completely free and confidential. I will tell you on the spot what can be done and what it will cost. If you are looking for help, you've come to the right place. Call me, Stephen Leahy, at 312-664-6649. Again, that's 312-664-6649. Or visit us on the web at chicagotaxteam.com. Call me today. You're listening to the IRS Radio Hour with attorney Stephen Leahy on AM560, The Answer. Attorney Stephen Leahy brings his passion and expertise to your radio each and every week during the IRS Radio Hour. Tune in, take notes, and be educated. Learn your options resolving financial obstacles that face so many. And now, back to the IRS Radio Hour with your host, attorney Stephen Leahy. Welcome back. I am your host, Attorney Stephen Leahy, and this is the IRS Radio Hour on AM 560, The Answer. And this is our, this is our this, segment where we talk about the this IRS. This is. This is. And oh, funny we, thing. We always talk about the IRS. Yeah, this, is, yeah, <laughs> this, is, you know, this is funny. Well, this is uh, our, our section where we, we get into our, our, weekly, uh, our weekly ongoing saga of As the IRS Turns. 
This week, we found out that everything they've ever told us is a lie. <laughs> I suspected that as much, Jim. <laughs> I, I don't know what else to say, ladies and gentlemen. I, I don't but know. But now we find out that this thing twists and turns and twists and turns, and everything they tell us turns out to be wrong. I, uh, unless you're just being a right-wing fanatic and you're making well, this out of nothing. Of course, I love right-wing fanatics. <laughs> I get along with them. <laughs> That's, and they're almost as right-wing as you. That's right. <laughs> well, you know, this week we're going to get into uh, uh, what, what we're trying to say is they now say that... Um, well, let's first talk yeah, about what okay. Koskinen said about the hard drive in the Okay, let's, let's go back to the beginning, almost to the beginning. This is in June. The actual hard drive, after it was determined that it was dysfunctional and that with experts no emails could be retrieved, was recycled and destroyed in the normal process. This was... So was it physically destroyed? Uh, that's my understanding. So I like that. I like yes. the gasps in there. Oh, what do yeah, you mean it was physically destroyed? <laughs> that was stunning. And that was a stunning thing since they asked him in April and no one knew anything since February. And then all of a sudden he comes up one day and says, we don't have them. It's gone. And then gone. we find out that she, well, she had a BlackBerry and the BlackBerry had every email that she, that well, she. Well, uh, let's, let's wait about the BlackBerry because we want to get into Mr. Oh, oh Fitton. Mr. Fitton, who is actually the only guy who gets anything out of the IRS. It seems I like that, isn't I, don't, it? I don't know what the heck he's doing, but whatever he's doing, we got to hire him to be in So Congress. remember, we talked about last week that on uh, August 22nd, the uh, Judge Sully. Yeah, Sully, we call him. Yeah, Sullivan. 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 Judge Sullivan had a. Um, it had a deadline, and the IRS was supposed to come up with some declarations about, you know, where these – have you made the, these efforts to get these emails? Who made them? You know, where are the emails? You know, put it in writing that you don't have them. So this is Mr. Fitton saying what – telling him what the, the Department of Justice explained him. to him about, about these emails and everything. All right. We are learning that the IRS may actually have those missing Lois Lerner emails after all. Agency attorneys apparently telling Judicial Watch, the group trying to get to the bottom of this whole thing, that they back up everything just in case. Now, that may be a different story than you've been hearing since those records disappeared. The actual hard drive, after it was determined that it was dysfunctional and that with experts, no emails could be retrieved, was recycled and destroyed in the normal process. This was. So was it physically destroyed? Uh, that's my understanding. Okay. Because there was a. That's not Mr. Fitton. That was Mr. Koskinen again. Well, but that's because fit, that's, that's yeah. my error because I put the wrong clip on there, Jim. Well, that's but, that, but that's okay. Anyway, what what we're going into is she was she actually <laughs> she actually helped us here because this was stunning enough for us. And anyway, I, I like that no in the background yeah, when he when he, when he talked, because nobody believes that this that this could happen. And what you know what we're trying to say is this week now we find out that the the Department of Justice says that all these things are always backed up, but it's too much of a pain for them to go to it. Now, uh, what what we need, for, uh, what was what was the next part of here? We have... We well, also that was Fitton saying that, you know, that, the, I, that the, the Department of Justice told him that, oh, no, the, the, the emails, they exist. Yeah. They're on a backup system that the... As, as it's just said too hard clip, to get to. Yeah, it's just too onerous and we can't well, get to it. To be fair... The the administration and uh, other parts of the media who aren't following this, they still they still believe that there's nothing here. And here's a guy from the Washington Post. His name is Charles Lane explaining the other side of this. And a lot will depend on whether who is telling the truth here as to whether these are just kind of the same old backup tapes they've always been talking about or some new set of backup tapes. And I guess there's going to be a hearing in court on that and we'll find out. You know, the problem here is... Mr. And that's what, you know, the, the hearing will be because the judge gave him until August 22nd to come up with the declarations. And then there's a hearing about what they what they gave. So we don't know exactly what, what they gave yet. And it's really not Judge Sullivan who's handling that. It's going to go to a magistrate who's handling the discovery issue. So. Well, you know, the, the thing here is, he says, we got to figure out who's telling the truth. The fact is, since February, every time we check... They're the one who's the, telling the truth has not been the IRS. I agree with that. Every, yeah. every single twist and turn in this saga, ongoing saga, we have found out that they have lied to So us. Commissioner Koskinen told us, well, we did back everything up on these tapes, and they were destroyed. Those tapes were destroyed. And then, remember, a couple of weeks ago, they said, well, maybe they're not destroyed. Yeah. And now they're telling us, not only did those tapes, there's a different tape well, So all the scratches on the hard drive and the lost hard drives and the three hard drives uh, and the and, losing and my and the black, BlackBerry. The BlackBerry was specifically asked for and yet, this guy from the Washington Post as well. They had the same tapes that were going to be anyway. Yeah, so, so they, so they destroyed the BlackBerry you, because they had the, the emails on the that. tapes. 
but they didn't have the emails on the tapes. But they still, but they thought they had the emails on the so, tapes. So th- I can't wait till they get in front of the judge. I, we got to. I'd love to hear about this. But this is if the, the IRS is coming after you. Hide. <laughs> after you hide, then you can call me. Bring yourself. Don't answer the door. Three one two six six four six six four nine. Chicago Tax Team dot com. And if you yeah, have a question, I'm not an attorney, so don't take my my, my word about not answering the door. <laughs> right. Answer the door. <laughs> answer the door and answer the. And make sure you answer all the letters. And then don't we'll go anywhere. We'll question. come right back. That's right. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Stephen Leahy, a local Chicago attorney. I believe that God has given each of us unique abilities, and we are to use those abilities to help others. I have helped hundreds of Chicagoans recover from financial disaster. And if the IRS is threatening you with liens, levies, or garnishments, or you have years of unfiled tax returns, I want to help you. Compliance is the first step to resolving your IRS problem, and compliance begins with your 2013 taxes. Are you ready? If you call now, make an appointment, and visit my office for a free confidential consultation, we will complete your personal 2013 tax return at no charge, even if you don't hire me to resolve your IRS problem. Remember, I'm a local Chicago attorney. Investigate me. Simply Google Stephen, with a V, Leahy, L-E-A-H-Y, reviews, to find out what the Better Business Bureau and others have said. Or call me at 312-664-6649. Again, it's 312-664-6649. Visit us on the web at chicagotaxteam.com. Call me today. Welcome back to the IRS Radio Hour with attorney Stephen Leahy. Stephen has helped hundreds of Chicagoans recover from financial disaster, and he wants to help you and your family. There are resolutions, and you will hear about all those resolutions during today's informative discussion on the IRS Radio Hour on AM560, The Answer. Now, here's your host, attorney Stephen Leahy. <laughs> Welcome back to the IRS Radio Hour. I am your host, attorney Stephen Leahy. Steve. We, yes, Jim. We made a mistake in the last section. I think I made the mistake. Uh, oh, they said, I, there, there's Shemaya Culpa. That's right. It wasn't Scott. It wasn't Scott. It was my fault. I sent him the wrong clip. But here's the clip I wanted, to, I wanted you to hear. That's how important this is. Right. The Department of Justice attorney told a Judicial Watch attorney on Friday that uh, it turns out the federal government backs up all computer records in, clay, in case something terrible happens in Washington and there's a catastrophe so the government can continue operating. And they say it would be too hard to go get Lois Lerner's email. It would be too hard to go get Lois Lerner's emails from that backup system. So everything we've been hearing about scratched hard drives, about missing emails of Lois Lerner, other IRS officials, other officials in the Obama administration, it's all been a pack of malarkey. One of the main reasons why I wanted to get that clip mm-hmm. in is I love the word malarkey. Malarkey. <laughs> I love that when word. you can work in the word malarkey, you know that this is a highbrow kind of <laughs> kind of show. So we had to get that in. I thought that was important. That Vanessa Williams. <laughs> this is a highbrow show. Stop the Vanessa Williams stuff. Lonnie Anderson. <laughs> Vanessa All right, Williams. Well, uh, Lonnie Anderson is you. That's your your way out. Of no, that's not me. It's a friend of mine. But so, anyway, Steve, this is a so I we're, so we're sorry. I know that uh, that all of you out there and in, in are listening are going. Wait, isn't this the part where this is the listener question? That is yes, it is. It is. You're right, yes, listeners. It is, it well, is the tough part. Sure. And so today we're going to talk about since we're all conservatives, we hate change, and we're not really changing. We just had to get that. I wanted to get it. That's in. right. You need a mighty cop on that. That's right. So, Steve, what is the listener question this today? Time? The listener question is about strategic defense. The fault. The fault. Defense. Who are you, Ronald Reagan? <laughs> I <laughs> give up. Was that my initiative? Yeah. The strategic <laughs> defense <laughs> initiative? That's right. Uh, but it's a, a strategic default. It's funny how this works because uh, I you get said the question. three times. I, I understand. I don't, I don't know why that does. But I blame myself. Uh, one of the. It's funny how this works because I get a listener question or we get a question. And then it, I have it a couple of times this week. Uh, a couple of people came in and talked to me about strategic default. What, uh, and what is it? Okay, strategic default is is people who are behind. Generally, it has to do with mortgages, and I'm behind in my mortgage. Uh, maybe I'm actually maybe I'm not behind in my mortgage, but my my building is underwater. I owe a lot more on the building than it's worth. Maybe my maybe the crime is bad, and I don't really want to live here anymore. And I can't sell my property because the because it's just underwater, and I can't pay off my mortgage. And um, and so people want to get out from under the the property. A lot of the in the two instances that I talked about where people came in my office this week had to do with investment property. Mm-hmm. That's not returning on the investment. 
So it's costing hundreds of dollars or, or mm-hmm. more a mm-hmm. month. A yeah. month. Mm-hmm. And uh, how can I put an end to this? I mean, this thing is killing me. And it's, one of them in particular was in the city. And there's some uh, issues with the uh, zoning or the um, inspections. And they're being inspected. And they don't have the money to put on new roof or to change the uh, to change Can't the. Can't they just buy tickets to the Alderman's picnic? <laughs> well, that that might be much cheaper. Be but then they cheaper. have. But but also you have the uh, you have the people that are living there that are having rain on them because the roof is bad or the back porch or some. A lot of times in the, in a lot of instances, and these things cost a lot of money, and you're already losing money on the on the property. So you think, well, how can I get out from underneath this? And you know, sometimes people will call up their mortgage company and say, "Well, you know, I'd like to get a loan modification." Uh, can you help me? And the mortgage company will tell you, well, we can't help you unless you're three months behind. And so people think, well, that'll be a strategic default. I'll default. And uh, three months later, the mortgage company will help me and they'll give me a, a loan modification. And the answer is they didn't say they would help you. They said they can't help you unless you're three months behind. So ah. I always tell people, never default on your mortgage on purpose unless you're willing to go through the whole pro- the whole litany of things that could happen. So one thing that could happen is you, you lose, lose everything. You lose your home, and you and, well, it's, and that's maybe not what you wanted to do. But that if you go in the, down that road, that could happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can get into a deficiency and we're, oh, still owe the mortgage company, you know, a lot of money, even though you don't own the property anymore. This is because Illinois is what they call a recourse state. And a recourse state means that they can come after you and get a deficiency for the difference between what they sell it for at foreclosure and what you owe them. And if I'm under underwater already and it takes a year for them to go through a foreclosure, now I'm really underwater. I'm going to owe them a lot of money. And so oftentimes what's at the end of this road is bankruptcy. And so if you don't want to file bankruptcy, then don't go down that road. So sometimes you're just going to have to bite the bullet. And, you know, so I, I met with the client this this week and we talked about it. He didn't want to hurt his credit score. Well, I don't think there is a way to do a, a strategic default without hurting your credit I, score. I was going to ask, does, was, does that go on your permit record? Well, <laughs> yeah, well, the answer is yes. And so if you don't want your credit score to be affected, well, then you can't really do a strategic default. And if you don't want to pay the difference, then you can't really do a dis- strategic default. And if you're not willing to go through the whole process and go through the bankruptcy, if that's what it's going to take, then you shouldn't do a well, strategic whose, whose default. Whose decision is it if, if you're going to be stuck? I mean, is it up to the loan company? Or the mortgage well, you company owe or? them money. I mean, it's it's that simple. It, I always tell people, you know, if you if you make money on property, do you share the profit with the mortgage company? No, that's true. No, the answer is no. So when you lose money, that's right. If it's an investment, do I you guess really you're, think you're that taking the, I, that the mm-hmm. mortgage company wants to take the loss. The no. answer is no. Okay, if I don't have anything, I don't have any money, then they might take the loss. And this is short sales and bankruptcy or loan modification. So D's and D and Lou, we'll talk about that at another time. But if you're thinking about a strategic default, then you should call me at 312-664-6649 or visit us on the web at chicagotaxteam.com. So don't listen to your mortgage company. Talk to somebody first. Just make sure you go to somebody who's, who's on your side, yes. not on the mortgage company. Remember, side. I have a free consultation, so it won't cost you a dime. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. Hi, I'm Stephen Leahy, and for me, success comes when I help other people. That's why I became an attorney. I know the economy has taken a financial toll on many families and businesses, but I believe that they can recover from their financial problems if they just get the right help. I'm here in Chicago, and I know that if people improve their financial situation, they improve their lives, and I want to help. If the IRS is attacking you with liens, levies, or garnishments, if your mortgage company has threatened foreclosure, or collector's calls are driving you mad, you need help. We listen to your financial situation, find out what's really going on, and develop a workable solution. Remember, I'm right here in Chicago, and your first visit is completely free and confidential. I will tell you on the spot what can be done and what it will cost. If you are looking for help, you've come to the right place. Call me, Stephen Leahy, at 312-664-6649. Again, that's 312-664-6649. Or visit us on the web at chicagotaxteam.com. Call me today. You're listening to the IRS Radio Hour with attorney Stephen Leahy on AM560, The Answer. Attorney Stephen Leahy brings his passion and expertise to your radio each and every week during the IRS Radio Hour. Tune in. Take notes. And be educated. Learn your options resolving financial obstacles that face so many. And now, back to the IRS Radio Hour. 
with your host, Attorney Stephen Leahy. Welcome back. I am your host, Attorney Stephen Leahy. This is the IRS Radio Hour on AM 560. The answer. I always do that after the, on every uh, segue, <laughs> even though they even though they say that right before they come back to the show. I still say it. That's the way it goes. Yeah. Segways. They're for kids. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, wasn't that Barry? Yeah, Sobel? Uh, what was yeah his name? Barry Sobel Singer. Right. <laughs> I Barry think Sobel. that's the first time his name has been mentioned in 25 years. <laughs> he was funny that, that, that uh, back yeah, in the day. That, that's right. Uh, that was back in that's back when comedy was comedy. Um, we were we were going into look. We wanted to point out the fact. One of the reasons why I pointed out the fact that uh, the IRS is not putting out these uh, the information that they usually put out. And, of course, they're using the fact that we're cutting their budget as the reason why. That's not the reason why. The reason why is because, as, as we have shown over these last few months, this administration is using the IRS. And every other agency. And every other agency. Well, well let's talk about unemployment numbers, how they manipulate the unemployment numbers. And there's some allegations that before the last election, they were giving us wrong numbers for unemployment to f- falsify that they were going down because they had this idea that if they got under a certain amount, he would win. Well, I don't know if that's why he won, but he did win. No one had ever been elected with, with, with the unemployment that's over it. 8%. So and they, they had get, to get that. And like, you know, and I, you know as funny. you know, Rush Limbaugh for two years was saying, they won't be at 8%. Not, they won't be at even a, What's the guy on MSNBC, the, the, the guy who's on the floor who started the, the uh, Tea Party movement? Uh, you know, the guy who's... I know he's... Uh, anyway, he's, he called it too. Uh, you can bet a million dollars that by the... But by the <laughs> By election day, twenty or twenty, you know that the number is yeah. going to be lower. You, yeah. So what we wanted to point out so was so do they manipulate the numbers, Jim? There's some talk about manipulating the numbers when it comes to crime in Chicago because they reclassified a lot of a, a lot of things, and so what they used to call murder or what they used to call well, robberies or what they don't call them see, that anymore, see, and so it comes off of the numbers. We here in Chicago are used to those kind of things. The, the people from the United States are are aghast that somebody would do. Do you like that word, aghast? I do. Yeah, that, it's that, not malarkey. That, that, it's the, no, there's no malarkey in this. <laughs> anyway, that, that, that they're stunned that somebody could use every lever of government to get their way. This by not telling people about people moving because we are in a governor's election. Now, last week we had the clip about the about the JV team. Yeah, and, oh, the, yeah. and they, you know, if you read the article, they're talking about ISIS, and then he talks about, you know, around here we talk about them being Kobe a Kobe Bryant, JV. but then the the someone asked him about that this week, and his uh, spokesperson Josh, whatever his name is, comes out and says, "Oh no, he wasn't talking about ISIS or ISIL, or he was talking about these other it's, groups." And it's uh, it's so uh, it's just not true. The, uh, the truth the truth is is something very hard to find right. to these people. They reinterpret, and, they reinterpret it. They reinterpret everything. It's it depends on what the meaning of the word is. Is well, you know this. Yeah, you know, well, that's you know, the, that's, know that's also that's, attorneys. But I mean, you know, the the fact be the the point be that I'm trying to make here is is that they these all these agencies they're they're here because the people of the United States trust in them. If they lose the trust, and and especially the IRS, if we lose trust in the IRS and think it's just some kind of partisan hacks. Who's you know this eighty percent that we pay on our is going to be way down below that? Not eighty seven percent. Yeah, correct. I mean, but you know, but again, so if the IRS is coming after you, you can't trust the IRS that they're going to be fair with you. You need an attorney. You need. A, you should hire me. Okay, so three one two six six four six six four nine. Now, before I forget, I want to thank Scott because this is his second week that he hasn't been here. He's done a great job, and it wasn't for his us. fault. It was your fault. Well, well that, I wasn't even blaming him. I would never. Blame I did. Him. I just wanted to let, let everybody know it's your fault. <laughs> I like the way that is. I'll take I take responsibility. It's my fault. <laughs> and what what we want to do is let everybody here know that we're looking out for you, the folks, That's as right. the, as what's his name would say. Okay. On a, on and so don't forget, join us next Sunday at five o'clock on AM five sixty. The answer.